Howdy. So, I'm making a little project now. I knocked this up in cardboard as a template. And a while ago, a few months ago, I made this toy garage for um, one of my grandsons. He turned three. And uh, apparently it's holding up pretty well. Made it out of plywood. This is just the mock-up. It's, it's been played with quite a bit and uh, it's, it's still holding up alright too. It's just hot glued together. Um, but I'm going to make another one of these for my other grandson for Christmas. So I need to get stuck in. It's not far to Christmas now. It's on Friday, this is Monday. But, uh, yeah, this is fairly fairly simple design. I just actually used a plastic um, bucket, um, you know, one of the Nelly bin type things, to, to gauge the size of it. My wife wasn't sure how big it would look, and, and I actually got a um, you know, got something and said, well, how about would this size be all right? She knows more about working with kids than I do. I know more about making stuff than she does, so as a team, we can do stuff. Anyway, so uh, I'm about to start making this. I've bought some ply and I've just cut the end off um, to make the base plate, so I need to cut that to size. So I will start working on it. Time to get a good use out of my Triton after all the work I've put into uh, refurbishing it. Let's see if it works. It'll be 400 or 500. So I cut this off at 500. It's a couple of mil short, but that doesn't matter. It's only a base plate for it. But this is set to 400. And let's see how we go. Well, that was a good start. Ah, okay. <laughs> Need to uh, remember how these things work. I've got to clip on the uh, trigger on that saw. Right, uh, hopefully this time it'll... Yeah. That's the first cut I've taken with that in probably 10 years maybe. And the blade is pretty blunt. So, warmed it a little bit. So we're going through. Let's strip this a little bit. So I need to look at that blade. But, the saw works. I'm uh, working on the cutting it out. So I've done a couple of cuts, had to change the blade on the saw because the circuit saw hasn't been used for a long time and the blade was shot. So now I'm just working out how to cut out each of the pieces that I need to, to minimise waste. I've got a little bit left. I bought a 600 by 1200 piece of 9mm uh, ply. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, anyway. Yeah, 610 by 1220, 9mm um, ply. And I had an off cut, which was just back there, from the previous one. So I'm trying to use it up before I finish, or take any more out of the... So I just cut a 400mm by 500mm piece out of the, uh, uh, out of the full sheet, because I couldn't get that. And now I'm getting whatever I can. So I'll put together a list of, uh, maybe attach it to the, um, we can download it, of, of this, all the size of the pieces that I have to cut. Um, but I, yeah, I'll just keep cutting.
I've moved this, um, you can rotate this plate and it, when you do it with this orientation you get out to 260 and uh, if you turn it, this plate around you get out to um, 450. Uh, you have to turn this um, fence around but that's just as easy as loosening it off because it's got T-nuts that just come out. Um, but I've found that I have to, when I've rotated it onto this side, I have to add one millimetre to the measurement to get the correct size. But that's, I mean, it could be I, I put these stickers back on and if they're half a millimetre, the um, tapes, if they're half a millimetre out of position to where they were originally, that would cause that issue. But, it, I mean... It's not that big a deal, you just add a mill. And if I'm right, that's 70 mil. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Um, uh, mm. 31. So that was actually should have gone on to 70. So maybe I got it right. That's, but this is where you can do something different with a uh, table saw that you can't do with a circular saw. So, this bit I've just done is going to be, if we look at this, it's going to be this driveway down here. Um, I've cut already front, side, back, and this in, into just the rectangles. Um, so, and I cut them all at 160. Um, so I just ripped off a number of ones at 160 and now I just have to trim them to, to length and then I just have to cut out these this shape here and then I will need a triangular piece well sort of semi triangular piece here it's got a, a little bit of a step up at the back here to make this bit here but basically a triangle and then there's another piece that goes into here to uh, block that off so I'll just keep going so one piece I forgot about and I'm going to need this is the um, guide for cutting my different angles so I want to cut a piece off that's at 270 and it's only 70 uh, 245 it's only 70 wide so I'm going to need to use this to keep it straight. So to do that, I actually had to cut the paint out of this slot because this drops into that slot and moves on there and it's too tight. So let's Okay, that didn't work so well. I mean, actually it doesn't matter because this piece is going to be going down like that and I've already got, I've got to cut off this bottom. So either going to go that way, cut down here, or that way, cut down here. So even though I dodged that up, uh, and it'd probably go best if I put it that way because that cuts off a fairly steep angle there. So long as the top of it's all okay, which it more or less is, there's a little corner off here, but that'll putty up. Um, we'll get away with that, but 
All right, so I might have to do a bit of videoing, to, I mean, a bit of YouTubing to see how I'm meant to do that so I don't nearly kill myself. Well, I didn't nearly kill myself, but so I don't mess this up. So I've done the uh, shorter pieces now. So this is how you swap it over to get the longer cuts or the wider cuts. Oh, no. That's that oh, yeah, that, is that side, is it that side? I'm pretty sure you turned it around. Okay, there's a couple of retainers here. There's a little clip. That's the shorter. That one. How's that one? That has to turn around. For that to work. That has to turn around. There is a hook. That has to hook into the middle of this. Ah! That hooks in over this way. Yes, of course it does. Now, I can drop this into as a tab here. Put that drops into. Alright, that tab's in the right place. And now, into there. There's a tab on here that keeps it in the right place. And now to get this to read correctly, you need to drop that down. And turn that around. And now, we set the cut in the wider gap. Well, that was a little less smooth than I wanted. So the front piece is going to be 266 long. It's going to come down here, 266 and 266. And I'll just double check so that's 266. Mm, maybe I don't know. That's about 267, I think. But actually, when I did this before, this is cutting on this side of the blade, that's cutting on that side of the blade. The original blade in here, that was blunt as blunt as blunt, is um, two and a half mil. Original blade here that was in it is two and a half mil, and the blade that I put in is 1.8. So when you're cutting on this side of the blade, uh, it's now going to be. Uh, well, it's 1.8, 2.6, it's going to be 0.8 wider, so this close to our millimetre that I was talking about. So, I just have to adjust that 
on the, on this. So if I make that 265. And check. Sixty-six. Put my other glasses on. My better glasses. Ah, see ya. Yeah, it's probably about right because it's maybe half a mil. I mean, I know I'm fussing over. This is the trouble. I'm a, I'm a machinist at heart, working with metal, so I always feel. I have to get everything within 0.05 of a mil. No, it doesn't even matter. That looks better. So, this should be right. So that's the front. I have over here, we've got the base. It's cut. And there's the base. This is the uh, front piece, but it's going to have a couple of bits cut out. This is the right hand side. This is the slide. So I need to put a second tick. I put one tick on this when I cut the. Um, one dimension, I put a second tick, and I cut the second dimension. So here's the piece for the left side. It's got to be 270. So what we were saying it was, had to be, I don't know, was it a millimetre over or a millimetre under? 270. It's got to be a millimetre under, I think. So 269. 269. And that looks right. All Should be 270. Yeah. About half a millimeter out. I was cribbing while I was cutting it. Alright, that's good enough. So 270 by 160. Left side. So I've got the back to do. And the back has to be 345. 344. Get it right, I think. 344. 344. Pretty good. All right. Basics cut for uh, all the main parts, and I think I will um, wait until I've got. Hold on. So I've got the main parts cut. So now I have to cut out, uh, for example, on the side here. 
this bit. I've got to cut out that side, cut that angle. But I think I'll be doing that on my bandsaw. out this part now and just press that with a file and uh, did the edges we've got a new toy so that's my Christmas present here so I've been using it early so I just gave it a little bit of a trim up like that and uh, that and that and even like that just to, just to get those edges right. So there's the front area for the uh, for the garage. Okay. Day two. So uh, I've just got that bit of wood here to stop it from marking with the foot of the clamp. But I just yesterday finished off that side. There's the uh, ramp. So I've just clamped it together to uh, make sure everything's sort of sitting together correctly. And now I have to cut the roof. So I'll, uh, I know what it ought to be size wise, but I'll just, with it clamped together now, I can. Um, just have a look at it and see what it actually is and I'll cut something to fit I only have that bits of scrap from the original and the off cuts from the um, these parts so I will have to knock another bit off my nice piece of sheet out here but that's no big deal uh, it was $31 oops it was $31 Australian for the uh, piece of material so it's not the end of the world so I'll, I'll work out what I need to cut for the roof and cut it. I've pulled the thing apart again. I've cut the material for the top but I need to cut out the uh, bit where the runway comes through. And now I'm just going to put some of these onto the front and back or back and side of this. Um, down there because I want 20 millimeters of 
what would be fence around the outside of the um, above the roof so which becomes the floor of the yeah, this lip here 20 millimeters so I have to add the um, nine millimeters for the actual timber put them on and uh, that way I've got myself something to fix the roof to and keep it level while I'm putting it together I've put uh, some timber onto there so that I've got something to hold the uh, roof in place so now that'll hold itself in position I've got a little brad nailer that uh, I use plus a bit of glue so I now need to cut the uh, piece out of here so we can this bit out of there for the uh, ramp and then that's ready so we'll be able to screw this together well nail it together fairly soon I've got the uh, whole thing sort of clamped together now so I've got to put a piece in there and a piece in there I'm debating I can't remember what I did on the other one if I cut this out nine millimeters extra down here then I can have a piece that sits um, inside of there but on the other hand if I just had a piece like that would make that narrower but it'd be I think I need to bite that out because that's going to be really narrow there for the cars so I'll just cut that out this down here so to make room for a piece to go inside of there it's going to make it more interesting to assemble but that's all part of the fun isn't it put a couple of um, bits on here to support this and that's now tapered on each end little chip out little chip out here but that's out of sight, out of mind from when I cut it. Now that sits in there quite nicely. So it's probably time to start putting some of this stuff together. Okay, so it's all starting to take shape. Put 
goes in there. So I probably need to mark a line down the side here where I need to put the pins. But yep, it's starting to take shape. Got it all nailed together now. So there's a couple of nails in there that are point in the wrong direction but basically the whole thing is pinned together it pins all down the side there pins right the way back across all the all the way around and uh you know, down on each side oh I haven't done that side I'll go and do that now oh no that can't be done because that's got the door so that is not going to go very far if someone four years old has a go at it I reckon it'll hang together so now I've just got to seal up the gaps got a little bit of a gap down here that I went about a millimetre too far in that but uh, Oh yeah, and I've got that piece in there. That's all tacked in there and along there. So, all in all, let's come together all right. All uh, nailed together now and glued. And I've put some putty on it. Just to fill in all the little gaps on the corners and everything. I'll give it a rub over with some light sandpaper to clean that up tomorrow. But um, it's pretty well. A little bit of a light rub back and be ready to start putting some paint on it. So it's all coming together quite nicely. So I sanded down the uh, putty that I had on it and now I've put a primer on the base so I'll turn her over and uh, put the primer on this side but yeah it's all come up quite nicely with the So, onward and upward. First coat, that's just the primer. So it's all tidied up quite nicely. So, we need to just put a couple of top coats on, or one or two, we'll see. Uh, but it's all looking like it could be a present for Christmas. Here's the first coat of uh, paint, not primer, but probably doesn't look any different to what it did in the last shot on the video, but basically it's a bit shinier. So that's coming along alright. I'll leave that to dry and uh, second coat it soon. Well, the uh, Two coats of colour, well white, are on, and we're just detailing. My wife did the blue stuff, but uh, once we do that, I've um, cut out a piece of aluminium plate. I've got some screws. So, um, I'll. We'll put the letters on, we'll let this dry um, here a little bit and uh, then I will uh, 
we'll, we'll put the letters onto the nameplate and uh, and then just screw it to the front and that's it ready for tomorrow for Christmas well the final product I always start with well or so <laughs> I'm trying to stop that but anyway well and so here's the um, final product it's got a few little we had to get into this early because well no we didn't have a lot of time, so I've got a little bit of paint out on the corner here. That's very annoying because it peeled out. I think we just didn't have enough time for it to um, dry properly. But it is ready for... Yeah, there's another little bit on the corner of blue paint there. It's just a bit of blue paint, but I can't get it off. We could paint over it. But anyway, Sebastian is for getting it so you can see the, the names. Uh, his name is uh, in uh, mirror type stuff. So. Uh, um, my wife put the... Uh, letters on so any judgment <laughs> on any crookedness is not my fault but uh, anyway I'm sure that Sebastian at four years old will not be too worried about anything I've got my little bits I, I hate looking at finished products because I always find something that I'm happy with I'm unhappy with is a you know, tiny little bit of blue paint just a speck here and here that's bothering me but as I said Sebastian will no doubt be happy to play with this and that's really what's about okay that's the finished product all right